gives you that option. Yeah, I've done that. Fab. Okay, super. Okay, so, right. Can you now see my, oh no, my PowerPoint presentation? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like not very creative. So I apologize in advance for, for this. Um, but um, I just thought, I don't want to do like death by PowerPoint, but I, there's quite a lot of information that I wanted to share with you to start with. Um, so we probably might fly through it, but if there's something that you want to go over in more detail, just stop me. Um, and likewise, you know, if you think actually, Roxy, we know this, I can skip past it, but I will share the PowerPoint with the group after anyway. So like, don't feel like you need to take down notes because I will just upload the PowerPoint so you can refer back to it. And then we'll have the recording as well so you can watch this too. Um, is that okay with everybody? Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, okay, lovely. So um, yeah, this is the basics of nutrition uh, in collaboration with Tri Energy. So thanks again to Sam for like giving me the opportunity because yeah, this has been really, really helpful for my studies. So thank you. Um, right, so I will just, let me just work out how to go to the next one. Yeah. Lovely. So um, the first thing that I wanted to kind of go over is energy balance, because before we've talked to kind of um, last week, there was kind of a lot of questions around like managing weight, whether that be to lose weight or, you know, um, to keep hold of weight when you're training so much, making sure you're fueling yourself, that sort of thing. So the first, when it comes to weight management the, and food intake, the first thing I think that's really important to understand is, is your energy balance. So um, as we've got here, basically, if you've got what's coming in is equaling what's going out, then you're going to maintain your weight. And likewise, if your energy in is greater, you'll gain. And if your energy out is greater, then you'll lose weight. And that those are the most simple equations that you kind of need to remember. Um, so based on your goals, if, if you're really happy with your weight and it's just about performance and you think you're at good weight for your racing and things like that, then you, you want to make sure that the calories that are going in are equaling the calories that are coming out. Um, and likewise, for those of you focusing on weight loss, then you need to be thinking about this equation. So um, for me, I think there were like a lot of myths around like different foods have different impacts on the body and like, um, you know a certain vegetable might be really good for weight loss and, and actually my view of those things is it's only good for weight loss or for weight gain um based on its calorie content so that's why i've got here calories are king because for me i'll always be thinking about the calorie content we'll come on to like the macronutrients which is like whether it's protein fat or um carbohydrate but first and foremost when it comes to weight calories are the most important thing so I'll show you this here. I really like this pyramid. This is from Eric Helm and he does a lot. He spent a lot of time researching nutrition. He's looked at it from a bodybuilding perspective, but he's also looked at it a lot in, regard, in, in regards to performance, which is where I think it's really relevant for you guys. Um, and so you might have heard of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so this is like Eric, Eric Helms's hierarchy of like nutrition. So at the bottom, he's like calories. You know, if you haven't got your calories right, then these things that you're doing above that are not going to have much of an impact. So calories are the most important. Then you've got uh, like what's making your calories, so the macros. Then you've got micros, which is like your vitamin and mineral content of things. So that might be where you start to play around with like more, more kind of variety of vegetables to make sure you're not suffering from fatigue, for example. So like, because I know a lot of you guys are performance athletes and when you're training really hard, um, you might, if you're nailing your calories and you've got your macros sorted, you might then start to think about, right, am I getting enough diverse food? Have I got the right vitamins and minerals coming in? And the reason that micronutrients comes before supplements is because where possible, we always want to get our, our nutrients from food rather than to have to supplement because obviously supplements are expensive and they're not always used as easily and um, absorbed as easily by the body. So then we have meal timing and frequency, which again, it's not saying it's not important. It's just, it becomes less important if you haven't got your calories and your macro balance right. So it, we're not saying like, you know, if you've got a five hour run, it just doesn't matter when you eat. Of course it does. But, you know, likewise, if you're massively under eating, then the timing is not going to be as relevant. 
And then of course we've got the supplements on the top because we always try and prioritize like to, um, intake through food and supplements, the majority of supplements, they don't make a massive difference. Um, it's really marginal. So if you're doing like probably 90% of, of your performance and progress is gonna come from food. So that supplements 10%, I might even be overstating that to be honest. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you that pyramid and that way when today I spend the time talking about calories and macros, you'll understand why I focused on that to start with rather than let's say jumping straight in at supplements. So hopefully that's clear. Give me a thumbs up if that's, if that's okay. Am I going at an okay speed for you or is it too fast? It's all good. All good. Perfect. Okay. So just go to my next one. So I thought, Starting off then, if we're looking at calories and we're thinking about those equations at the start, we want to think of calories, I've broken it down. So first of all, we're going to think of the energy inside. So um, we take in energy through food, drink, alcohol, and then I guess for a lot of us here as well, gels. Now, I didn't know if we class those as liquids or solids, so I've just stuck them in their own <laughs> category. Are they a food? Are they a drink? Um, but of course, they've got a calorie content. That's why we consume them, right? We want that energy. We want those calories. Um, and I think the really, for me, the really important point I wanted to get across here about calories and energy in is that the daily recommended intakes are really not very useful. So these were, were done decades ago and it was based on the average man um, and the average woman and the average activity levels back then. Now, of course, I think our lifestyles are quite different now um, and perhaps the average activity levels are a bit lower than they used to be. Um, but most importantly for me is that like I think it's really hard to find an average person um, because there's lots of different ways. You might be um, average in weight, but not average in height. Um, you know, you might be, there's all different ways you can be average, but also not be average. And I think it's really hard to find an exact person. Um, and chances are nobody in this group is going to fall into that category. So when people say like, oh, I need 2000 calories or I need 2500, that just might not be true at all. Um, and it can be really misleading and can make it quite difficult for you to have enough energy and fuel for your performance if you're basing your initial kind of guidance on these daily recommended intakes. Um, and I just put here like triathletes are not average. So the key is that like these recommendations come from average activity levels. And of course, if you're a triathlete and if you're doing training, especially with Sam, like guaranteed you're not doing an average level of activity. <laughs> like, I'm speaking from experience of having done a horrendous hill session today. Um, you know, triathletes are not average. So I think that's just really important to bear in mind that um, I think it, I always think it's best to just develop an understanding of your own requirements. Like I just kind of chuck these daily recommended intakes out the window um, and, and kind of try to look at, at what you what you need based on your energy out um, and what you're actually getting based on your energy in. So um, yeah, so that's kind of the main, the main take home point, I think, and, and which is why I'm going to set homework at the end of this, which is completely optional. Um, but I want, that's why you'll see why I've set the homework when, when you bear this in mind. Um, so yeah, you can also get calories from drink, which I think sometimes lots of people overlook. Um, you know, you might be consuming, um, fizzy drinks, like not, not the diet version, but fizzy drinks or um, lattes, things like that, hot chocolates and alcohol, especially like that has a calorie content. So I'll pop that in there. But I know some of you may not drink alcohol if you're training or you might drink more if you're training. I don't know. Um, so yeah, because things like orange juice as well, all those things have calories in them, which is really useful to bear in mind if you need extra energy to fuel performance. And likewise, useful to bear in mind if you're perhaps on a weight loss journey and you're consuming kind of like these, these hidden calories through, through liquids that you didn't realize. So um, just check that. Right. Yeah, so that's the energy. And so within the energy in, section of that equation we've obviously got if you remember the pyramids we had calories and then macros so you might hear of like people saying count your macros or if it fits your macros things like that so macros are basically the macronutrients and there's three of those there's carbohydrates proteins and fats um, and so basically all foods fit into one of those groups and we have different requirements so um Protein is like absolutely essential. So nobody can, can live without protein. 
there's different types of protein. So there's complete protein, which is so all your animal based proteins. So um, for example, yogurts, cheeses, eggs, meats, all animal based protein is complete. And most, I think apart from two, most um, plant based proteins are incomplete. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, um, the variety of food sources becomes really important because if you have four different types of incomplete then you might end up with a complete source um, if that makes sense so but if you had a massive portion of one incomplete you're still going to be incomplete so you need to kind of mix and match and when we say complete we mean it has all the essential amino acids that your body needs to be able to kind of utilize protein um, so protein is made up of these essential amino acids and they'll do the, the good work in the body um, that we're looking for. So um, I think actually last, last talk we were discussing, and it was a different point, but it was really helpful. We were discussing um, the kind of recommended doses and this was about vitamin supplements, but we have here a, like an RNI um, for protein. And I just wanted to highlight sometimes the discrepancy. So the, the RNI is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight but this isn't saying you should go out and strive to have 0 0.8 this is actually just the minimum amount you need to avoid deficiency so to end up with like chronic illness you need to con to, to really be um be consuming this much protein but i think it's really easy for kind of for that to be a bit misleading and people to think oh 0 0.8 i should be trying to aim for this amount um, and actually the ideal amount for optimal health, it has varied, but overall, um, the research is supporting between 1.2 and 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram. But this, this can change obviously based on your training and you know, if you're really looking to build muscle because you wanna build strength into some of your performance, then you might wanna increase your protein a little bit as well. Um, and likewise, if you're dieting, you might, might want more protein because it's really satiating, which means it helps you to feel really full. Um, so protein and fats are like the most satiating foods, but protein has obviously got a lower calorie content. So as we can see, it's four calories per gram of protein. So um, carbohydrates is also four grams and fats is nine um, sorry four calories and then fats is nine calories per gram so that just shows like per per gram of food you're getting with protein and carb you're only going to get four calories worth so if you're on a weight loss program that could be really good to utilize that and you might want to keep fats quite low but if you're needing to consume a lot of energy because you're like because you're training so much and because you are performance athletes then you might need to kind of think about having slightly higher fats just just to be able to get in that energy without having to eat ridiculous volumes of food um, so that's something to, to consider um, and i think sorry i think this 1.2 to 1.6 is a really good starting point for most people um, so if you if you're thinking about trying to go away and calculate the kind of the right um, macronutrient balance for yourself then this this is a really good way to start um, and I've just listed here some of the things that protein is essential for, so muscle retention, immune function, repair and growth, and really importantly, adaptation to training. So if you're doing all this training and you're not um, consuming enough protein, then your body probably isn't adapting as quick as it could do. And you might feel more fatigued and things like that. So protein is really important. Um, and once you start paying attention to it, like you can do little things like just make sure you have a protein serving with every meal. And if you're eating at least three times a day, before you know it, you'll have hit your protein target. I think it's one of the easiest things to achieve. Um, but I thought what I could do, if you would find it useful, is put together, I think we kind of mentioned it last time and I said it, we, we can do that if you like. Um, but we could do a, um, a high protein food list and it could be quite cool for you guys as well to share some of the things that you eat that help you get high protein. Um, so for me, I have 0% fat Greek yogurt and I have 250 grams every morning and that's 25 grams of protein. And I love it because I love yogurt and I can put all sorts of things in there. Um, so that's my what I do. And I, I also really like um, light Leardama cheese. So I think in one of those slices, it's like six grams of protein. Um, so sometimes I just eat four of those slices when I'm being super lazy and I can't be bothered to make a meal. <laughs> so I'm like, right, I've eaten my protein, now I eat my cuts. So yeah, not advising that, but it's just, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in a rush and you might be grabbing certain snacks, 
So I think it could be quite cool for us to share like some of the little tips and tricks because I'm sure all of you will have some kind of, um, will have some nutrition knowledge that will be valuable to others. And I think it's really nice if we can kind of share those little tips and things with each other going along. So after this, I'll, um, I'm just gonna make a note. After this, I will share my protein, my favorite protein sources. And maybe we can, we can all do the same. Um, if not, that's fine, I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> um, so moving on to carbohydrates now, and this is like a bit of a whistle stop tour. So if you feel like I haven't given enough information, then please like um, either speak up or comment afterwards, because then I can do another session where we focus purely on protein or purely on carbohydrates if you really want to get into it. But I thought just for now, I'll go through each one so that you can at least go away today with a an overview of what we what we kind of need to know for, for the basics of nutrition. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. Let's see. <laughs> so moving on to carbohydrates. So this is the main source of energy for all living organisms. Now it's really interesting because it's actually not essential for survival at all. So you can cut out all carbohydrates and still still live and exist. Um, but I personally think it is essential for training and performance. So um, it maintains digestive health. It helps with just optimal health. It helps with sleep. Um, I won't go into like the hormonal effects, but it's it, if you have a big carbohydrate meal before bed, you actually get something called postprandial somnolence. Have I said that right? I could have just made up that term, couldn't I? But I haven't, I promise. Um, yeah, so you get postprandial somnolence and it can actually really help with sleep. Um, and the other thing I put here is increases satiety and palatability. And reading that back, I'm like, God, that's such a boring sentence, Roxanne. Why did you write that? But what it actually means is it increases feelings of fullness and it's enjoyment, like palatability is, is how you're able to enjoy your food. And I think that's something that's really important is that if you happen to eat a lot of food, for your fuel and your training and things like that, or if you, even you're not eating a lot, a lot of food because you're dieting, you really want to enjoy it. And carbohydrates do help a lot with palatability. So I think, I, you know, they're not essential for survival, but as we've known, triathletes aren't average. So for us, I would say it is essential for survival. Um, I put in here a little bit of a note about fiber because um, usually fiber gets like bundled in with carbohydrates. Um, and you'll see like on some food labels will include fiber in their carbohydrate content and some won't. So it's just something to be aware of. But um, fiber is the, so it's the portion of food that we can't digest. Um, and I found this statistic really interesting. So we kind of recommend for optimal health, 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day, but the average person in the UK gets less than 15. Now, I think that's because we don't really promote eating fruit and veg and legumes and things like that. But um, it's really important for, for health of your bowel. Um, and just uh, the chances are you're probably not getting enough. Um, so there's two different types of, of um, fiber, the soluble and insoluble. And the soluble fiber is like the sticky kind of yeah. oats, things like that. And, and that kind of really slows transit time and digestion time. So that could be quite helpful if you need to have food that's, um, you know, might, maybe before a long race, you want slow digesting. And then you've got the more insoluble fiber, which helps with... Um, transit time and digestion time and kind of moves get things moving quite quickly and that's you like your fruit and veg and things like that so that's just something to be aware of like you know if you're going on a run and you usually end up like always needing the toilet in the middle of a run having fruit and veg before the fact like knowing that it has a quick transit time you might think okay maybe i won't have my fruit and veg just before my run maybe i'll save that for after and maybe i'll swap it for a bowl of oats or something instead and again wheat has quite a high transit time so having something that's wheat based before a run might in like um increase the the likelihood of you needing to go to the toilet so they're just like i think these are just little nuggets of information that you know you can completely ignore and as long as you just get a variety of food you're still going to be absolutely fine but if you do want to kind of fine tune or if you if you're finding that you are having problems with like um kind of timings of digestion then th then this could be something just to bear in mind and again like we can look at this in more detail if you want to i think what would be really helpful is at the end when we have a little discussion if you can then feed back and let me know like what things you want to go over in more detail because obviously we've got the list from last week which we'll work through 
um, but it, it might be also helpful to know like at which which ones we should go over first like what's people's priority because we have got a long list of things that we will do over time but it's just what's going to be most helpful quickest if that makes sense so carbohydrate this is um, i stole this from martin mcdonald so i've given him sorry bear with me that's actually my dog squeaking his toys i'm just going to take it off him <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I thought it was going to go smoothly, but um, that's Bertie just ruining it for me. <laughs> um, okay, so I stole this from Martin at MNU, so I've, I've referenced him and given him credit there. And um, this just shows like the recommended intake per kilogram. Um, and I think probably for a lot of us, we're going to be in this performance category or maybe fat loss. But I think even for people on a fat loss journey, you're probably still considering performance. So you might want to be more around the three to four grams. But again, like I said at the very beginning, it's all individual. So I really, really recommend that you kind of work out your own intakes. But this is just a good um, guide. So as we can see, there's zero grams are required to stay alive. Um, for performance, it's actually really high. Um, that's my other dog now, sorry. <laughs> um, between three and 10. So I worked out here for a 70 kilogram female, taking a mid range of five grams would actually be 300 grams of carbs, which is 1,200 calories a day. And that's just for a very mid range, you know, that doesn't have the, you could go right to the end. Like if you're training for Ironman, things like that, you're probably gonna be around this 10 gram mark, um, which would take this way high, cause this is just five. So you're probably looking at 2000 calories alone just from um, carbohydrates. So when we then look at our average requirements that we started with, you know, that 2000 calories for, for women. Well, if you're a woman who's doing performance training, um, you know, for, for long distance, you're, can, you're needing all of those calories just from carbohydrates without even taking into account your protein requirements that we saw as 1.2 grams. So I think this is just really good way of seeing how different the requirements are, like seeing it laid out like that, depending on your goals, can really just help to kind of cement that kind of, um, well, my ethos, which is that you need, to, you need to base everything on individual requirements. So that, yeah, that's just a nice table I thought was, was quite good to look at. And again, like these are guidelines. So you might find actually, that if you're doing an insane amount of training that you may even go above 10 grams, you might be 11 grams, you know, it, it just totally, it, it really does depend on your own requirements, which is the other side, the energy out, which we'll come to. So just check I'm doing okay for time. Um, so I probably need to speed up. Um, so fat, we've got fat, which I've said before, is like slightly higher calories per gram. And this is really important for immune function, absorbing vitamins, and most importantly, producing recovery hormones, which I thought was a really, really interesting point, given that a lot of us are kind of damaging our bodies every time we train, and we really want to not, not only optimize our performance in training, but I guess optimize our recovery between, um, and that way we can kind of get more from training. Um, healthy levels of fat, see healthy, you know, this is more like when you went to really low fats, for um, a long period of time, there was like some, some kind of indicators of chronic illness and the same with really high fats again. Um, so this is kind of like a good starting level. So if you're really unsure about what you should be consuming somewhere in this, if you're somewhere in this range, it's probably fine. Um, but I thought I found this from a research paper, which I thought was interesting was that moderate levels rather than low fat intake of fat appears to help to support the beneficial effects of endurance training on the immune system and i thought that was a really cool kind of um just a, yeah a cool well, i can't think of the word like not anecdote because it's research but anyway you know what i mean yeah so I, I thought it was kind of nice to know that actually having slightly higher fat so this 32 percent that's of a percentage of intake so um if you're taking a thousand calories then you'd have uh, 320 from fat um, rather than the lower the lower range, so you're probably looking more around here. <clears throat> um, there is a, there's lots of um, information around fat, like saturated, unsaturated, good fats. Are, are there bad fats? What, what kind of levels should you have of each? And I'm not going to go into that today, just because it can get quite like scientific and technical. And I don't know if it's always that helpful starting out. I think you know having to think of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins 
is probably enough without having to think of different subsections of facts and all of that as well. So I haven't put this in today, but it doesn't mean that we can't cover it. Um, and then that brings us to energy expenditure. <clears throat> so I just want to check in, is everyone okay with like what we've covered in terms of like the energy in? Is that yeah, really great, thanks. Tech? Yeah? Okay, yeah. lovely. So I'm going to look at the other side of the equation now. And um, <clears throat> I'll probably just run through these fairly quickly because they're quite self-explanatory. But the basal metabolic rate is basically the energy you need to sustain vital functions when you're awake. So it, it's literally just your brain function, your respiration, your digestion. Now, basal metabolic rate can go down um, if you're dieting. So that can just re reduce. It just means you're going to burn slightly less calories when you're doing nothing. Um, but overall, the BMR is, is like impossible to influence. So when you're thinking about burning calories, you just need to forget about BMR because you can't, you can't influence it. All you need to know is that it accounts for a portion of the calories that you will burn in a day. So on a basic day, when you do nothing, you might burn 1,200 calories and that will be the same. You'll always burn those calories regardless of the, of the activity. So it's just something to be aware of because it takes up quite a large like brain functions, actually really energy consuming. So it's just good to be aware that you have a BMR. And if you spent a long time dieting, your BMR will reduce. So your energy out will decrease even if you change nothing else. It's just, just something to be aware of. But I've, I've put it in italics. So everything in italics means it's really difficult to influence. And therefore, the things that are not in italics are things we can do things about. So you've got the BMR, which is like your basic, when you're doing nothing, but you are awake, your body burns these calories. You've then got NEAT, uh, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, but I'll always refer to it as NEAT because the other one is a bit of a mouthful. Um, so this is the energy expended for everything that we do that isn't sleeping, which is the BMR, like sleeping or eating. So which isn't covered by BMR and isn't covered by exercise. So neat is things like, you know, you're doing your 10K steps, you might be doing your shopping, your house cleaning, the calories you burn just doing those general activities are what we call neat. And these are really easy to influence. So if you spend a day and you've done 1000 steps in a day, you will have, you will have burnt less calories because your neat will be lower. Um, and so if you're trying to conserve energy, um, then reducing your need and being more stationary will help with that. If you're trying to burn more calories because you're on a weight loss journey, then increasing your need is a really quick, easy win. And then as a sort of subsection is non-exercise, non-activity thermogenesis. So it's the energy expended for everything we do that is not sleeping, eating, daily activity or exercise. So this is things like fidgeting, um, or facial tone that like I'm quite fidgety as a person but then some people are like really kind of still and again this is highlighted because yes you possibly could influence it like I could probably try and be mindful and be a bit more fidgety but chances are you're not going to and not significantly so um, it's just again something you know it's, it's kind of it's kind of a fixed thing some people have high knee nap some people have low knee nap it's just one of those things you know you might need more calories than your sister for example, because I know some people before have said, oh, this person can consume a lot more calories than me and I don't know why. And um, actually, I think it was Andy and Ellie had that conversation last time. And this could be part of the reason. Perhaps, you know, one of you has um, really high NENAT and the other one has really low. Someone might have quite high BMR. And it's not that the reason I'm telling you this is just so that you can understand sometimes it can be quite frustrating when you look at others and it seems they can eat more or they can eat less and do more, whatever it is. But these can explain the individual differences and it can explain why the energy out can be so different. Then we've got the thermic effect of food. So you can't change this. So um, protein requires the most energy to digest, followed by carbohydrates, followed by fats um, and Alcohol actually is um, requires more energy than both carbohydrates and fats, but I like to focus on the macros rather than alcohol. Um, so the thermic effect of food is energy used up to digest food. So that will just mean, you know, if you're eating a really high protein diet, you might lose more weight than if you calorie matched it for carbohydrates because you burn more calories eating protein. Um, if you don't understand that, don't worry, ignore it. <laughs> Um, 
and just know that again that's something that happens so you'll burn more calories if you eat more protein it's kind of the simple thing so you might need to have if you have if you ramp your your protein up because you're trying to preserve muscle you might need to increase your carbohydrate just a little bit so that you don't burn more calories and then this one I've put in bold because this is really important for us. And this is the energy expended during exercise. And this is where as triathletes, we're going to have the most difference because we do so much expenditure um, through exercise. And that, that's the biggest one. Um, <clears throat> and then I've got this. I stole this from Martin again, but I've given him credit, so it's fine. Um, I think this is like a really nice example. Um, and it just lists kind of most of the things that I've discussed. And it just shows how important these things are. So you've got your BMR, which accounts for, in most people, again, 70%. Then you've got your general activity, the thermic effect of food. And then your energy expenditure is usually quite low for most people in terms of actually how many calories. Because let's say most people did um, half an hour of exercise. It might be 200 calories. But in a day, they burn 2,200. You know, it, it's, only, it's less than 10%. But for triathletes, if you're training multiple hours a day, and you're doing that every single day, then th th this section is going to be a lot higher. So that just then leads to why we might need to consume more calories. So that kind of just explains that other side of it. And this is where we'll see the most difference. So we've got the tracking. So we've got energy. We now understand a little bit about energy in. We understand um, sort of where, we, where, we're, where we're giving energy out. Um, and I suppose for me, the next logical question then was, okay, so how do I know how much is in, is in each side of the equation, right? How do I know? I know how I get energy and I know how I lose it, but I don't know how much I'm gaining and how much I'm losing. So for energy in, there's different ways of tracking what, you, what you're consuming. Um, so you can use a written food diary. Um, you can use MyFitnessPal, which is an app. And I really like MyFitnessPal because you can share it with people. Um, it has a really great database of like all the foods and you can scan barcodes and it will come up with the macronutrient and calorie content. There are some inaccuracies, but um, if you just kind of cross reference with, with the food labels and you can, you can tend to find the right thing. Um, you can also track by portion sizes, um, taking photos of food and by weighing your food and kind of writing that down. Um, I've put a note about food label inaccuracies. Uh, so you're only required to be, for the calorie content stated on, on food packets, uh, the government only requires you to be within 25% of either side of that. So, you know, I, I like to put this in because some people can think that, you know, you need to be really precise when you're tracking and weigh every gram. And it's great if you, if you want to take it to that extreme, but, but just remember it's, it's going to be inaccurate anyway, because the food, the, the standards in the country are not that high, you know, they can be inaccurate within 25%. So if, if you're worrying about every single gram, you're trying to compensate for something that's already inaccurate. So, so don't worry is my point really. Don't stress too much. It's okay. You know, you can track as loosely or as accurately as you see fit and what is right for, for the kind of stage of your journey. Um, and the energy absorbed can change based on different people, but that's kind of more, um, I won't talk about that now actually, but the biggest thing with energy in is under reporting. So people for like, whether consciously subconsciously but as humans we we just have a chronic problem with under reporting the food we eat so we tend to not remember things um we we eyeball something and we completely underestimate it we don't really understand the value we don't we're not very good at conceptualizing calories and that's why i like my fitness pal because you have to you need, you can weigh something or you can scan the code of something and it will tell you there and then how many calories are in that so it's really good for raising awareness. Um, I think you can develop unhealthy habits by tracking for a really long period of time. So in the past, I've tracked for about two years and I don't think that's that healthy really. But I think it's really good to use for a week um, as an athlete you know, every now and then track for a few days just to just to get away. Where am I at right now? You know, am I really eating enough to fuel all my training? Or if you're dieting for a few weeks, then you might want to utilize it for a few weeks if you really need to hold yourself accountable. But I don't see it as a long term solution for anyone. Um, other nutritionists do. And they, they you know, they want, would like clients on it all the time. But uh, um, I don't I don't really like it because of the behavior, some of the negative behaviors it can, it can encourage. So um, my, my homework would, would be to get download my fitness pal and trial it for a few days. Um, if you've had any kind of like um, any 
sort of worries or, or issues with food in the past and you think that tracking it could be quite triggering or might lead you to some negative behaviors then please don't it's, it's much better just to continue doing what's right for you but if you're if you kind of feel like you could quite comfortably track and um be able to be objective with it then i think it could be a really useful exercise because you might realize actually i'm under eating on on the key training days um or you might think actually i'm overeating so uh, my vi my homework is to track for three to five days including a weekend day just so you can be really honest like it doesn't mean you need to change anything at all and you don't have to share this information with anybody if you don't want to um, but just to track because you'll be surprised at the awareness like you might realize whoa my protein is barely re reaching that rni of 0 0.8 or you might think wow my fat's so high and i haven't got my carbohydrates in and we know that carbohydrates are what's fueling our training so i think it could just be a really good awareness raising um, kind of exercise and then you can share if you want to you can share on the group kind of what you've learned or you can message me and see if I, I you know i can have some advice maybe on meal swaps or things um but my first sort of call would be to try try all this and see how you get on and just see what you learn um and then on the other side energy out obviously you've got training peaks which i presume most of you will be using to kind of to share your workouts with Sam and then obviously you've got your your coaching with Sam so Sam will know and you guys between you you'll have a really good idea of the energy of the exercise you're doing and the energy out there's just a couple of things that um probably won't be being captured is your your changes in neat so for example if you're doing more steps maybe you do share that with Sam I'm not sure um but it probably says it on your tracker so maybe it's something you could start because I know in training peach you can actually add your daily steps so maybe that's something you can start doing if you don't do, or you can just at least keep a track with yourself because you might find that your need is really low and you want to be burning more calories or you might think, you know, I'm just like cannot eat enough food to sustain these levels. And maybe you can bring your need down a bit, but just again, having that awareness of it is the, is the starting point. Once you know what it is you're doing, then you can look to make changes if you need to. Um, the other thing I want to point out is exercise tracker inaccuracies. So, um, they overreport massively for women because although they adjust the, um, you can put in your height, your weight, whether you're female, etc. And although they do adjust the calories burned for women, all the algorithms that they have used to create that data has come from men. Um, there's a really interesting book on it by Caroline Credo Perez, and it's called Invisible Women. And she writes about all the ways in which data in like the, the, the fourth industrial revolution, like ignores women. But it ma this is the key thing is that it massively over reports for women, which can be really misleading for weight loss. Um, so it, that's just something to be aware of. So if it's telling you you've burnt 2000 calories, you probably haven't. Um, the good thing is it is, um, it's usually consistently inaccurate. So it's reliably inaccurate. So, you know, if before you, it was saying you were doing 200 and now it's saying you're doing a thousand, you probably haven't increased by 800, but you will have increased by a significant amount and, and we can still use that information. So it's, it can still be, be really useful for us. Um, and the other thing I would say is just stick to one method because if you change between different methods, um, of tracking calories then the inaccuracies it's not consistently inaccurate so you know always track your activity with your Garmin or always track it with your Apple watch or whatever it is just as long as you try and use the same device because then you've got that consistency. Roxy? Yes? Um, I, I get what you're saying about women Do, you know the trackers for men are they found to be actually accurate? So they're definitely more accurate I can't remember the exact statistics but again it can, um, most of the time, it over-reports. Um, and if you report, self-reporting as well, like men and women both equally like, likely to set over-report when it comes to calories burned. Um, so the other thing that it, your watch may or may not take into account, depending on um, what algorithms it uses, is that as you become more efficient at exercising, you'll burn less calories. So, for example, a beginner triathlete will probably burn loads more calories during a 5k run than somebody who's well trained because they're way less efficient, their body's not adapted. And so the more and more you train, the less calories you will burn per, per hour or per minute of training. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, the other thing, if you did a two hour run and it says I've burned a thousand calories, say, yeah. is that actually a thousand calories that I've burned running or is it adding in 
a twelfth of my BMR because I've been alive for two hours as well. Yeah. So um, on the Apple Watch, you get active calories burnt and total calories burnt, and there's usually um, I'd say about a fifty calorie difference per hour for me. So I don't know about the other. Um, um, I don't know about Fitbit or Garmin or other trackers, but I, my guess is that they, they might take into account your, um, the calories you burned because you've been yeah. alive. Um, okay. I don't know because it will vary, but that is a really good point and it is just something to bear in mind. But um, chances are, you know, I, I just like to scale down. Whatever it says I'm burnt, I kind of like to let's scale down. Um, and that's why I like the idea of tracking because if, if, you, if you track your food for, for a few days with my fitness pal, and if you also track your training and track your weight, so if you weigh yourself every day for the days that you're tracking your food, we can plot those things on a graph and we can work out how many calories you need to, to, to maintain or to decrease. So um, I, can, I can put that in a spreadsheet for you, actually, and then you guys can download it. Cool, um, thank you. So we would want your weight. I mean, you can put different things in there. Your weight, your steps, if you wanted to, if you wanted to understand your NEAT. Um, your exercise, so how many calories it's saying you're burning. And then your MyFitnessPal calories. And we then would be able to get like a rough estimate. So I can put like a little really simple spreadsheet together and upload that to the group. And then you can kind of fill that out and we can look at the results together. Um, but yeah, so I, I like to think of it as energy in is like 90% of the time underreported. Energy out is overreported. If you can take those into account, you'll probably find managing your weight or increasing slash gaining becomes a lot clearer. Because I think it can feel really confusing when you think you're eating hardly anything and you feel like you're doing loads and you're like, I'm not losing weight. But chances are you're not eating that little and you're not doing that much. So we just need to kind of understand that and be really honest with ourselves. And it's just something that us humans are really like, you know, we're just not good at. We're not good at understanding the, the two sides. Um, so, yeah, that was. Um, ah, OK, well, that was kind of well timed. Um, yeah, so, so that was kind of the two sides of the, of the energy equation. And this is some um, kind of guidance around tracking. And if you do feel up to it, then you can use the MyFitnessPal app. You can use the other, the other, um, stop it. You can use the other options too. And I quite like, if you wanted to send me any of your data, I really like having photos along with MyFitnessPal because I can't tell if you're under-reporting if you just send me MyFitnessPal because I just have to take what you sent me as true. But I, you might say, oh, I've only had, a, had like, you know, 40 grams of oats. So you put 40 grams of oats in my fitness pal, but I see a massive bowl and I know it's probably more like 80 grams. So that f the photos along with the my fitness pal data is really helpful, like as a nutritionist to kind of to get an idea of under reporting and, and, and under reporting is nothing to be embarrassed about. Cause I, like it's just human nature, um, but it's just good to know, like if you're prone to it. I, I know I am. I, I just like sometimes I just flat out lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, like I only had like a nibble of a shortbread so it doesn't count but it did <laughs> so um yeah so that, that's kind of my summary for today so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen just so I can like feel more in, like I can talking to you guys and then we can have like a little question time if that sounds okay so yeah, uh, Sam, can you, do I need to unmute people or have people muted themselves? No, no I think people can just unmute themselves. So okay. if you just like, hover over your uh, video, you can click on unmute. I just wanted to ask, you know, the My Fitness Pal, is that a totally free app? Or, yeah. Okay, it's just totally free. So you can get a paid version where you can set yourself calorie goals and things like that. I've never used a paid version. I'm sure, I think it's great. I think it's like £40 for the year, but I've, I've always used the free version. Yeah. Okay, fab, thank you. Yeah, so that's that's something it's I was I can post some screenshots um to the group. But um I, I really like it because when you go in, like you just go into it like this. Mm -hmm. I'll try and show you now. And um oh no. So yeah, so go in here, press this little add, yeah, and then it comes up with weight, water, food. 
So I just add in food. So you can track your weight in here as well, but you can track weight in training peaks. So. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can do breakfast, lunch or dinner. And then you just search. So these are my recently used foods. Uh, but here you've got like a barcode. And so if you've got like, um, I don't know, if you've eaten like um, a chocolate bar, for example, that's you've eaten the whole thing that's come in the wrapper, you can then scan the barcode on that wrapper and it will input it all for you. So it's really quick and easy. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I quite, I quite like it. And then it saves your, your most recent. Um, and one of the things is you might be thinking, oh, well, I cook my own meals and I have loads of different ingredients in there. Yeah. So then that's not very, you know, I can't scan a barcode for like mother's homemade lasagna, but um, you can add, you can create recipes. So you can add multiple different ingredients, the portion sizes. So weigh out your ingredients, add them in and then say like, Maybe you made a batch cook, maybe you did like a batch and then there's, there's four portions in that batch. You can add all that information in. So I've got like Roxy's mints, Roxy's fried rice, um, Roxy's vegan curry. And then I can just add those. Um, you can also add meals. So if, if you have like the same meal every time that's got, you have a banana, your porridge, a latte, you can create that as a meal. Cause I, I, I use that function cause I have the same sort of meals all the time. And it will just add multiple items for you at once. So it, it can be really convenient. At first, it takes a little while because you have to input all these things. But once you've done it, it's all in there. Um, which is, yeah. Really I think I've used that a years ago. Oh, really? It, yeah, I mean, absolute years ago. But I think um, what you're sharing now is completely different to, to the way it was. Yeah, I've been using it for have, a while. Yeah. And I found um, previously a lot of the foods that were in there weren't very accurate. They, yeah. You yeah. had like the wrong data, but they've done, they've worked on quite a lot now to, um, to improve foods. And, and some foods have like a little green tick next to them. Yeah. I don't know how you get that status, but it, it usually when they have a green tick, they're really accurate. Okay. So yeah, that's quite, they've come a long way actually. Yeah. I'm glad you said that not to kind of use it as a, um you know, to use it every single day and just use it for a couple of weeks and just get an idea. I think that's really good because my sister, she used to use it continuously and I could see the change in her behaviour as well. Yeah, you, and I think you can really get sucked into thinking, yeah. only thinking of foods as calories, yeah. which is not healthy because we have enjoyment. We have all sorts of, you know, it's so, the social elements, aren't there? There's lots of different things. Um, yeah. So I... Yeah, I, I've seen as well, like lo negative habits developing from tracking yeah. for a really long time. So I wouldn't like to recommend it just generically like that to a group of people when yeah. I don't know your history. My, definitely my first recommendation would be just use it every now and then as an yeah. awareness tool. Just going back to the chocolate bar. So let's yeah. say I've done the barcode, <laughs> but I only have half of it. Half yeah. half. You can put that in. You Can you put that in? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise if it's gonna say like oh you've had the whole bar then i may have had half okay yeah um, i'll download it tonight and have a little play around with it, it sounds really good yeah i think it is and really what helpful you said about um under reporting like i think it's so true so like you really inspired me last week just with the whole introduction and just got me thinking you know what am i you know what am i fueling myself with what am i giving to the kids you know just that sort of thing and i, I started writing it down but i didn't really feel like i was being honest with myself so then i started taking photos of like every single thing that like yeah. passed through my lips and i was like god that's quite a lot actually <laughs> but when i was just writing it i was like oh, you know that handful that doesn't need to go on the list yeah and can we just overlook things or we just yeah. underestimate things i think it's just like part of human nature maybe definitely it definitely is like maybe it's a survival thing you know yeah. Um, when food is scarce and things like that I don't know as much behind it but I know that it's just so common that ev you know everyone can yeah. un under report um oh, the other thing I wanted to say actually was that you can um you can set it up in your settings um in training peaks if you go into if you have it on your mobile phone uh you can go into training peak settings and you can automatically import from my fitness pal so actually, if you're tracking, if you are tracking regularly, because maybe, you know, you're going for an Ironman and actually for these next three months, your calorie intake is really important and you and Sam want to manage it closely. 
um, if you track in my fitness pal, at the end of the day, it will import it into Training Peaks. So then Sam can also see how your calories have changed. Uh, you know, it does all those nice graphs on mm. Training Peaks. You can then see your calories plotted against that. So you can then perhaps see you've increased calories and then you might see an increase in performance or whatever it might be, or you've decreased calories and then you see your weight decrease if you track your weight in Training Peaks as well. Because actually Training Peaks has this full functionality um which yeah. is really good on the dashboard in training peaks the graphs that you can create are endless and so you can yeah. map over you know your um anything to do with nutrition you can map that over on top of another graph with performance and start to see sort of peaks and troughs and trends and yeah so i think once you've got all the data in there you can manipulate it in so many ways it's really and useful I, I would really recommend that actually like especially if you're like um you know really focused on the performance side and you don't think you know and, and you don't mind tracking for a little while because you can also see like if you pull calories down and then um and then you see your performance drop you know you need to pull them back up um and that could be quite helpful if you've got like a weight if you've got like a weight loss goal and a performance goal because we're constantly trying to manage the trade-off between those two because performance requires fuel but weight loss requires you know a calorie deficit and if you're constantly trying to manage that, having that tracked so you can see, right, we've, we've, cut, we've cut calories too quickly there. Performance is just absolutely nosedived. But if you haven't got that tracked alongside it, it might just be difficult to spot those trends because equally it might not be as obvious as a nosedive because you probably will notice if you cut calories drastically and then all of a sudden you just can't run. What you won't notice is those subtle changes over time, which is what Training Peaks is really good at mapping. So... Um, and likewise, you might you might play around with your carbohydrate content, things like that, and you, you just want to be able to see that on there. Um, so that could be quite good for new, for your performance. Um, well, for anybody who wants to do it, really. But yeah, like Harpreet said, I think it's just really good to um, just be aware of some of the negative behaviours that can come around getting obsessive with tracking and weighing and having to weigh everything. And, you know, if you get to the point where you feel like you couldn't comfortably go out to a restaurant and eat because you can't weigh it, then you need, you know, you need to change. So um, my boyfriend like sometimes has to take the scales to Nando's. So no, <laughs> you know, you have to. Whereas I just eat anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Amanda, you've raised your hand, but um, oh, we can hear you. It was you. an accident. Oh. <laughs> okay. No worries. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it can be really good to kind of sync it with with training peaks because it really helps sam as well to know what's going on with your nutrition and it just helps because i think it's good not to have it like in your head feel like it's completely separate from your performance because it's so closely linked and if yeah. you are making those changes then it's really good that sam can see that yeah massively like totally agree with that and sometimes it's really difficult for me to get the full picture of what's going on with people so for example I had an athlete whose performance was you know started to drop this is a while ago now and I couldn't work it out you know and everything in training peaks was great you know and I was like are you stressed is work busy you know and one thing I didn't ask was you know like are you eating you know are you eating well are you fueling yourself you know and so it's just making sure that you you're thinking about how the nutrition and the training it, it all it's all part of the same puzzle you know it all massively impacts on each other so yeah it does help being able as a coach being able to see that whole picture yeah does anyone else have any questions and um, yeah so last time Andy was running up to an event we really struggled to increase the carbohydrate so maybe not for today, but for another time, some like useful hints of how to get enough carbs in, in a compact way. Um, Cause I just, you found like you were eating every five minutes. <laughs> I just felt like I was constantly eating, constantly full. And then you, you want, you need to go for a run or a bike ride and you think, well, I'm still stuffed. So I don't really yeah. want to exercise. You don't feel like it. Yeah. Mm. Did you have much, like, did you have many carbohydrates through liquids? Not really. No. no. Okay, because that's just the first thing that came to mind. There's obviously other other things, but the first thing that came to mind is that, you know, orange juices or things like that have quite high carb content and that might help you just feel slightly less like full of food. Obviously, mm. you don't want to feel like you've just got liquid sloshing around before a bike ride either. <laughs> but if you've got like a high carb breakfast and you couldn't possibly eat like a third bowl of cereal, maybe you could just add like some orange juice to it instead. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, that's just one thing, but yeah, I can definitely also do like maybe my favourite carbohydrate sources. Yeah, that's um, really good for like mega carbs. <laughs> yeah, because I presume that's something that's going to be kind of like a similar, not issue, but a similar kind of obstacle for for lots of people. You know, it's something you need to you need to have a lot of carbs, but might not want to want to eat like any pieces of bread or whatever i think I, I worked out that to have like um the 10 grams of carbs for for the average male you know the 10 grams per kilogram it was something like 66 slices of bread in a day oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so you might not want to eat 66 slices of bread <laughs> so yeah i think having some other sources would be helpful so yeah i can definitely i can definitely do that thanks cool thanks no worries is there anything else like um graham or brian have you guys no i'm good thanks yeah no, fine. okay lovely um and nigel what about you um nothing specific i mean you've covered quite a lot so there's quite a lot to kind of take on board yeah and yeah just kind of think about the bits and bobs and how it all fits together in the plan yeah 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 i think we have covered a lot so um i'm happy to like go back over certain aspects or next time we can sort of maybe look at one one of the things in a bit more detail um perhaps we can look at maybe performance or i'm not sure we can we can have a chat and have a think and i'll chat to sam as well about about what would be good for our next session but i'll share that powerpoint presentation um so i i, I when I was going through it, I felt like it was had loads of information in it, but then I realised actually a lot, not that much is written up. So if, if you want to kind of go over anything or if you want to chat anything through, then just feel free to send me a message on Facebook and I'll try and get back to you when I can. Um, but I'll upload the presentation and then you've got this recording as well. Um, and I'll upload the protein, my favourite protein sources, <clears throat> my favourite carbohydrate sources. And then I can do the spreadsheet. But what I was thinking actually is if you do use my fitness pal as opposed to the other tracking methods and you sync it with training peak, then that is a way better version than, uh, than any spreadsheet I could ever make because it's got your weight in because you can add your mm -hmm. weight. It's got your steps because you can add steps. Mm -hmm. It's got all the exercise and your heart rates um, and it will have your my fitness pal, my fitness pal calories in. So that, that will be, you know, far better than anything I could do. So I, I can upload the spreadsheet anyway, in case, you know, you feel like, whoa, that's all overwhelming and I just want to look at one thing. I can do that. But I, I actually think the best method would be to, to sync it with your Training Peaks. Now, Nigel, Brian, are you guys on Training Peaks? I've got a basic account on uh, Training Peaks, but you, um, I don't do really use it a lot. No, can you do this on the basic account? I can't remember. I don't know if it's premium. It might be premium only. I think it's probably premium only, yeah. yeah. How about you, Nigel? Um, no, I haven't got one. Um, I have thought about it in the past, so it's perhaps something I need to think about again. Just have a look into it, you know, just because obviously it's amazing for training, etc. But then if it's going to support the nutrition side of things as well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really good way to capture everything in one, in yeah. one place. So I, I, I love that. I've used it for, for years and years. And, and now I'm even more excited that there's a new app <laughs> and all the chocolate I eat will then be imported into Training Peaks. So. <laughs> Amazing. I like it because I just like to take the work out of it where possible because yeah. no one really likes tracking. Well, maybe they do, but I, okay, I don't really like tracking. Um, and I assume no one else does either. And so to, to track is one thing. To then have to write up that data in a spreadsheet and share that spreadsheet or do whatever i just find it, i find it can be a bit prohibitive whereas this just will automatically sync it like it maybe does from your apple watch or your garmin maybe you've got that set up so it automatically syncs um and so it just takes that extra step out of it um which, which i like but for those of you who haven't got the training peaks i'll definitely do that spreadsheet then because sorry i didn't realize that some of you didn't have it so um i'll do the spreadsheet so that at least you can kind of see how it, how it might um, track over time. And then you can get more of an insight into like the calories you're consuming and the calories you're burning. So is that okay for everybody? Brilliant, yeah, that's yeah, great. Brilliant, thanks Roxy. Okay, lovely. Well, I, that's all from, from me. So unless you have any more questions, then um, we can finish almost on time. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you so much, Roxy. So we'll, we'll use the um, nutrition hub to, 
to share bits of information. So I think everybody on the call today is, is in the herb, which is amazing. And right. I know already quite a few people have messaged me and they're going to watch this uh, oh, recorded yeah. version. So you might get a few messages off a few other people as well. <laughs> okay, to that's fine. Yeah. Keep you busy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really, really useful. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.